Uh, I would now request uh, Mr. Bimal, Jala, Bimal Jindal to please give his welcome address. And uh, you can either give it from here or you can go there, whatever is convenient to you. And probably you can touch on the financing if it's possible. Because you are a company with deep pockets and you know where, where and how to get the money. Good morning, everyone and uh, fellow industry friends. My name is Bimal Jindal. I take care of supply chain for our company. So I like to talk uh, first upon Indian opportunities which we have in the sector. India has a massive infrastructure. If you talk about our Prime Minister's vision on 100 gigawatt, it's a very big opportunity for us as an industry and you know, as a country, we can be a clean energy country. I was discussing a few months back uh, when Germany ran one full day on clean power. I feel you know we need to target these kind of days should start happening in India, which will help our country to you know focus and make environment friendly. If we talk about Indian opportunities, uh, just for you know information, uh, we have abundance of wasteland, which is not being utilized for any of the purposes. If we need to hit 250 gigawatt target by 2030, which is our government's vision, we can hit it with less than 6% of the land, which is a privilege for our country. Many of the countries don't have land, which is one of the key factor for solar to grow. People are trying to focus on floating solar also, which is not as advanced technology at this moment. I believe it's going to be the future what we need to look into. The government is talking about 100 gigawatt. It means we need to keep hitting roughly 20 gigawatt every year, which is a massive opportunity for all the developers. And we can you know, focus on this part. Make in India is another opportunity. So people talk make in India more on the panels. But I think we are missing about another key element, which is the structures transformers, inverters, cables, and other component also. So when we are going to grow to 100 gigawatt or 250 gigawatt in the coming years, this industry is going to create a massive employment for the Indian people. And it is going to you know, bring a big ecosystem for our country. I believe we need to look into those massive avenues and see how we can encash. Having said that, to hit this opportunity, we have many challenges in hand, which we believe the government need to help us out. And I believe government is working aggressively on those parts. The land is an opportunity and land is a challenge also. In India, land is the biggest problem for most of the developers. I was talking to my friend JK before the session and we were talking about one project where he said the land created a big issue for the developer. So while we have a lot of uh, land, getting land transferred to the developer with all the paperwork, helping the finances to you know give the funding to the developer is a big challenge. We need to look into how we can focus on that. India is talking about 100 gigawatt. We believe it will happen. But if we look at last year, there were only roughly 4 gigawatt of tender. If we want to hit 20 gigawatt by 2022, we need to have at least 20 to 30 gigawatt of tender, and we need to save one year for the construction period. So it means our complete ending process should be over by 2020 or 2021. So all those things need to be seen. The investor perspective, if you look at the like you know 20 to 30 big companies are focusing as a developer in India. They're keen to invest because they feel this is a very good market. But they need you know, support from the government in terms of floating the tender so that everyone can start focusing on their kitty and pie. I believe every developer has a you know, good pie to handle. 100 gigawatt cannot be managed by a few developers. So we believe you know, this is going to help the industry. GST is you know, another big issue, although it is launched in July. I believe most of the EPC companies and developers are struggling. I'm not talking about the modules, which is pretty clear at 
right now people are confused whether the epc is going to be at 5% or 18% and there is no official amendment or clarification came so far i am talking to so many consultants and there is a different opinion from the different consultants which is not even matching or aligned on the interpretation just today we had a very good report from the parliament panel who's you know supported uh, the industry drive and they strongly recommended that the government should support the manufacturing not focus on safeguard or anti dumping so we believe you know this is going to help the industry in a big way just like you know financing is a big challenge we are having discussion in the morning uh, with some of the financing institutions I belong to a Japanese company. SoftBank is a big Japanese company, so everyone assumes that we are focused always on the Jap Japanese funds, which is much cheaper. Let me break one myth. In India, all the PPAs are in Indian rupees; they are not in dollars. So when you talk about you know funding, it depends directly to your PPA. I think uh, there is a session on the financing the. people are going to talk more on that part but the financiers the lenders who fund this project they always focus and they look into what kind of returns you're getting in that currency and if you want to convert into that currency after x period how you're going to protect or are you taking hedging and other stuff and if you talk about hedging in india it's pretty massive so most of the developer i believe you know who look into this aspect they feel that the foreign funding also is much cheaper compared to india but if we look into hedging aspects it nullify the impact so we we'll, we need to look into how we can you know help the industry to overcome on that aspect if you are looking evacuation infrastructure is another big challenge for the developers if i look at we need to look into how we can make some you know comfort uh, i appreciate i think the government is coming massively on the solar park i believe the people who are working few years back uh, nasim sir has already said you know he's the veteran he knows that the people used to face lot of challenges when they are executing the project they are ready with their solar plant but they are not able to commission the plant because of switch yards or transmission line due to right of way issues or due to other challenges on the state transcoms so we, we need to look into all those challenges i we as a company believe uh, india is a very good market our company is committed to indian solar we are doing currently 500 plus megawatt in rajasthan and we plan to do every year few gigawatt to meet the indian solar mission that's all from our side thank you thank you so for your opening remarks it's really encouraging that in this environment you are able to do almost 1000 megawatts and you plan to do 1000 every year uh, so i would now request uh, mr sachin jain to give his opening remarks they are probably big in the rooftop business and you can throw some light on that and also please kindly limit the opening remark to probably 2 or 3 minutes so that we can have a panel discussion also thank you sir Uh, good morning everyone uh, just uh, uh, you know we are a, a give a background like we are a two year old company uh, so we do rooftop uh, but also we are done ground mount like roughly uh, we did in last two years about 125 megawatt uh, rooftop is still uh, less than uh, 10 or 15% Uh, but lot of uh, large uh, sizable projects we have done so i would like to basically maybe you know give my perspectives you know in terms of uh, from a startup perspective uh, which unlike from a lot of large companies and you know from a startup uh, is a little bit different how we see the market uh, so no doubt uh, uh, the market is huge uh, china this year uh, installed some uh, 54 gigawatt and uh, they are total about some 130 gigawatt or so and india is roughly close to 20 gigawatt so the market could be huge right uh, india is about 330 gigawatt of power and china is close to 2000 gigawatt of power right 
So market is huge and India can really grow a lot. So there is no doubt about it. Uh, tariffs have really gone down. It's, uh, you know, we all know it's touched 244 or so. Uh, so the question remains is uh, if the tariffs have gone so low, then how come so much industries, so much uh, commercial industries, yesterday I was in a building and uh, in Mumbai and we looked at their bill was like 13 rupees or so, right? And most of the industries in India are at seven and a half, eight rupees or so, right? So in spite of having so much of low power, where we are bidding at 244, uh, we are not able to pass on a lot of these benefits to industries and commercial industries, and it may take some time. Uh, so we are still away from that, and then we are imposing a lot of these duties, where solar is already at 244, so can absorb some safeguard duties and anti-dumping duties. But uh, the, the real benefit, the industries whom we work and you know, get a lot of this uh, end consumer products, uh, those can be competitive at a global level then, right? Power is one of the very major cost component. So I pretty much you know, see that uh, we are going in the right direction, but a lot of policies, uh, support needs to be there. What uh, uh, Narsimhan sir has also mentioned that the, you know, a lot of conducive environment for investors is getting created, which is good. Uh, so the tariffs can go down. Uh, another point uh, I would like to just uh, highlight is, uh, you know, last few years, you know, we have seen, uh, with respect to all my friends in the industry, a lot of large players are getting all the orders, right? So if you see each of the project sizes are 100 megawatt, 50 megawatt, right? Earlier, there used to be a lot of schemes by different states where you had three megawatt projects, five megawatt projects. So, so if a small developer who wants to invest, now what is the opportunity right now? Say a small EPC, or say a cable companies, right? Or say infrastructure companies, right? Now most of the projects are being given to a lot of large uh, projects. So we need a policies where, you know, it can support a uh, lot of small entrepreneurs, small developers, who can put three megawatt, five megawatt, such policies were there in the past. But currently, <clears throat> there are some one or two schemes from MNRE and SECI, but still it is quite uh, limited, I will say. Uh, so these are, uh, you know, some of the aspects, uh, uh, you know, which I see, you know, which are the steps which are uh, typically required as we go forward. Uh, uh, to have a more, you know, kind of a robust environment where India can really, you know, be a forefront uh, of, you know, uh, uh, in solar power in all aspects. You know, if I just give an example in US, uh, uh, you know, like the duties were announced, right? And duties were announced well in advance, right? And you know well in advance that in 2017, so much duties are there and it will go down and reduce in 2018 and say from 20% to 10% to 5% and, you know, so everybody can plan your installations accordingly, right? Now, suddenly if I am a developer and if somebody is developing a 100 megawatt and tomorrow if I get to know that, okay, my all safeguard duty, all my items will come in, right? So what will you do? How can you safeguard such interest, right? So it has to be very done in a very planned manner, not in a very haphazard manner, right? So some of the learnings, because India is right now almost like seven, eight years into solar, so a lot of learnings are there. So I believe these are just very some uh, few submissions I have, where uh, the market is very encouraging, but at the same time, it can be made more interesting for a lot of other players. Thank you, everyone. Yes. Thank you, sir, for your opening remarks. I will now request uh, Kapil Maheshwari ji to please give his uh, remarks. And he's from probably, again, another company with deep pockets. Probably they have come to the space a little late. Renewables probably are just centered in the last one or two years. But I think you can make big investments. Please tell us your, kindly limit your opening remarks to two or three minutes so that we can also have a discussion on some of the points that we all can. And also, we give the audience the time to request for them to raise their questions, whatever concerns they have. Thank you.
Thank you so much. I think I can certainly limit three months, three minutes to three minutes because as I'm speaking after Mr. Narsiman, so he has covered from safeguard to insurance to PPA renegotiations to uh, ISA in Delhi and all of that which could have been spoken in a recent conference is mostly covered um, by him and very well covered. So, so what do I focus on is, and some of the other panelists have already done it. So uh, what do I focus on right now would be, you know, we've all spoken on 100 gigawatt, utility is already doing good. Uh, I wouldn't say they've spoken already from this side when I was seeing this thing that we've spoken on a lot of these, that these are the challenges. Funding is a challenge, land acquisition is a challenge, this is a challenge. I would say there's a lot of positive news as well, which is now, you know, coming to the Indian sector. I mean, uh, in talk of the global VCP funding almost, 50% of the global, it was there in time, uh, TOI yesterday that almost 50% of the total global uh, VCP funding which is coming to the sector is coming to India. So that means there is a lot of interest from the international uh, investing community. And uh, that shows that they are seeing the positive side of it. Uh, I would say uh, PPAs are getting more and more secured. Uh, People are learning the way the response to the Reva PPA was that uh, if including uh, everything, prices can be competitive, be it deemed generation, anything and everything. So pe that, that is something which is quite encouraging for the overall industry. Uh, one point I would say from what uh, Sachin pointed out was it for us to grow uh, and for us to say two parts of it, uh, that we are growing with energy independence um, manufacturing is one part of it, but we certainly need to see how do we only not become a big boy game. I mean, what's happening right now is um, a lot of consolidation. And the reason of this all consolidation is the way bidding is happening, uh, largely the project would start with a project finance. And later on, people would see that uh, that portfolio, how can the project finance could be converted to a corporate finance. Now, when I say corporate finance, it could be getting a green bond, it could be getting a new institutional investor for you at that scale. So that then would definitely come when you have a good EBITDA multiple, a good scale or a size. Now, projects are helping these big boys to come to that level because each project, if it is coming with 100 megawatt to 250 megawatt, you can quickly achieve that kind of thing where you can move on from a project finance to a corporate finance kind of scenario, uh, maybe in a year's or two years time itself. So wh what do you see for you know players which want to execute and invest in five to 10 megawatt project is presently there are policies not very clear, so there's almost nothing. Second, I would touch upon would be, you know, the next big opportunity, what would be there would be when we see the convergence of energy and mobility. So that is something which would take this particular sector also to the next level where we are talking of all of us as the project sizes are increasing, the uh, installations are happening, but the demand is not increasing. So I would say India, because it's presently at a very low level of overall demand. I mean, our per capita consumption is so low, so there's only an upside to it. Even if we, even if I don't consider that there will be an increase in demand from industrial commercial sector, which, you know, uh, concepts like make in India can drive. Uh, we are at a stage where China was in 1992, 2003, where they saw massive increase in demand just because uh, of the just because of cooling. I mean, the air conditioning of spaces itself uh, in India could create by, let's say, 2025, a demand of additional 140 gigawatts. So that's pretty huge if you consider just in that space. Of course, policies like Make in India and all would definitely help. Insurance policies should definitely come. And insurance and large insurance agents, reinsurance companies, the problem with that as Mr. Narsiman pointed out that if you want to include loss of generation, et cetera, in insurance policies, there are policies from both private and public sector companies which are, you know, which can provide you that. But we need, when we go and fine tune prints of that, you have to come to your, you know, you plan for a CUF of X, when you come to around 70% of X, then only that insurance policy 
is applicable to you. So such things, you, the, the fine parameters of those insurance policy compared to the kind of benefits and the premium you pay for that is actually not there. So what we need to see that such things also come in a conducive way. And uh, uh, we've spoken about rooftop a lot, but I'm not presently seeing where, like even if I consider 100% uh, CAGR in the rooftop, uh, moving from 1.4 gigawatt to 40 gigawatt is, is, is not there. So we can maybe add a 20 more gigawatt to a solar park or 30 more gigawatt to a solar park because with the present policies which are available for net metering or uh, even if the rooftop tariffs are com comparatively much competitive compared to an industrial commercial tariffs, it's not taking to um, more than a gigawatt kind of installation a year. So that is where is another sector where there's a lot of potential, but uh, uh, the reason it's not happening is uh, primarily industry and policies. So that is where it is. I would limit to that. Thank you, sir, for your opening remarks. I would now request the last panelist, Mr. Rahul Mishra, to give his opening remark. I think you're primarily into consulting and also into EPC development. OK. Please uh, give your Hello. opening remarks. And then we'll have a small panel discussion. This is working. Hi, so I represent Ray's. Uh, and Ray's Future is essentially one of the subsidies that we've created to own and operate rooftop as well as ground mount open access projects. Uh, and we do offer EPC solutions both on, on the ground mount projects as well as rooftop. Uh, I think we have spoken a lot about multiple things, but some of the key issues, you know, which really plague most of the time our infrastructure sector per se and energy included, power included is, you know, it's a long term investment sector with a short term horizon in terms of policies and that's always been the case. Uh, and fortunately or unfortunately within power generation, it's only renewable now. So whether it's Ministry of Power or whether it's Renewable Energy Ministry, MNRE, uh, everybody is to focus only on solar or wind right now. As, as of now, I don't see really generation or any real development happening on the other side. At one end, we claim to be power surplus on the generation end, uh, while on the distribution side, we are unable to increase the load, which is where the key challenge is coming. And you know, we keep talking about evacuation being a challenge with wind and solar being a must win status, whether it should be or not scheduling forecasting coming in and multiple other issues will always continue to come which limits possibility of how much capacity do we really add and comparing with a country like China doesn't make sense whatsoever because of various issues whether it's government political land issues you know state politics to central politics to whatever other issues so you know these these would always be there but on the hindsight and even if you look at the kind of capacity we are still adding is is far more than what anybody could have thought in the last you know four years back in terms of solar now coming to focus i think some of the issues which may really crop up one is on the land side uh, i i seriously don't see there is an audit being done on in terms of how much of farmland is really getting into solar uh, the larger project really makes sense because the developmental risk is taken care of and large investors can come in without the development risk and come and bid at really low tariff which makes it more of a financial instrument rather than really a project risk anybody's taking other than the construction risk. And that's a great advantage to the government. So I think on large scale projects, you know, parks developed by governments, whether it's state or center or World Bank coming in the way we did in Reva, those are the measures which will allow real large scales coming with large scale investors putting up even 1000 megawatt at a single place at tariffs of say two and a half, maybe going to three rupees, two and a half probably is low. Uh, but but that's one area of business that definitely should happen and continue. The second where we talked about smaller projects, I think it will increasingly be a state subject where substation capacities will decide what kind of capacity can be put in the vicinity. But land issues, you know, interconnection issues, those kind of other stuffs will always come in. And at what rate? Because they will definitely be a rupee, rupee and a half, two rupee higher than some of the lowest bid tariffs when we are comparing a thousand megawatt or a 500 megawatt with a you know, 20, 30, 40 megawatt kind of bits, and how the financing institutes will really take the risk of financing these projects. So there again, a lot of government intervention will come into picture. Uh, I focus a lot on rooftop. I think we just touched upon the subject, 40 gigawatt, definitely not happening. Uh, but even if we do half of that, it's, it's incredible. 
uh, given the kind of numbers we are talking. Now, net metering today is itself a challenge. We have started talking about gross metering, right? Discoms is the biggest of the hurdles in terms of not allowing rooftops to come up because they, and they're right to say that, they end up losing high paying consumers, whether it's commercial or industrial. So unless they are satisfied in some form or manner, or they are allowed to, you know, have tariffs which takes care of their cost to other consumers, it's very difficult to scale rooftop. People are struggling to do more than 50 to 100 megahertz in a year. Uh, then look at the government rooftop and look at SECI or any other government agencies who've, who've done the bids. The last 500 megahertz of bids turned out to be 220 megahertz of BG submitted by the winners, including us. Uh, and the real capacity turned out to be for our case from a 22 megahertz coming down to you know 8.8 .8 megahertz. When we go and execute this, I'm sure will be around 6 megahertz. Worst come worst, none of the roofs we got under the bid is something that we are going to do. Everybody is changing their roofs. So there is no real work gone behind the bids. People have spent 10 months money surveying the roofs. And at the end, you realize find your own roofs, right? So from a SECI perspective, I think we need to segregate a separate entity altogether and probably someone like an NTPC or someone like a PFC consulting be given you know the mandate for rooftop alone and you know it can be more structured uh, in terms of bids when they come you know mere measuring the square feet on a roof is not going to you know decide the capacity of the roof and that's what is happening in most of the places so so these are the key points you know we have to segregate rooftop from ground mount these two are separate you know verticals altogether the reason for us to be creating a separate entity is ground mount is very different than rooftop and you have to have a very different mindset, whether it's logistics, whether it's about the timelines for commissioning of these projects, whether it's about the overhead that will eventually come, whether it's about, you know, the load sheddings that potentially could happen on a lot of the government buildings. None of these factors are taken into account for. And when, when someone like an SBI even try and sanction loans, they themselves are struggling, you know, how many DG run hours are there at the site. And while there is net metering, whether there is grid available to net meter your units or not. So, so there are multiple issues. I think this year uh, the industry is representing a lot to the government. Last six months, at least I have seen rooftop losing steam. I don't see government talking a lot about rooftop anymore as it used to be, you know, a year back. And a lot of the funds are struggling with the same. I, I come from an investment background too, but uh, I, I think these are the key points that you know, we'll all have to look at to really scale to a you know one lakh gigawatt kind of a number that we're looking at. Uh, thank you, sir, for your opening remarks.